we meet again at last. The circle is now complete. What's the world coming to? Well, you got a problem with what I did, Anthony? Oh, no, hey, no. Fucking rat anyway, so family's all rats. rats. Would have brought to be a rat. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Now you're gonna dig the fucking thing. You're gonna dig the hole. You're gonna do it. I got no fucking line. You're gonna do it. I'll dig the fucking hole. I don't give a fuck. I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was pure and simple. Jesus Christ, Mister, you okay in there? Ah, put some Disney coffee around here someplace. Do you any idea what the cost of your actions is? What their effect might be? Are you to give them hope? What do you give them? We give them happiness. Welcome back to the Cinefellas Podcast. On today's episode, number 105, I'll be speaking with director John Swab about his brand new film, Body Brokers, which hits theaters on demand and digital on February 19th. John was nice enough to join us on the podcast and talk about the making of this film. John was a street junkie for over a decade. During his early attempts at recovery, he went through countless rehabs and detoxes all over the country. In that time, he was brokered and taught how to broker bodies. This is the true story of the multi-billion dollar insurance scandal within the substance abuse treatment industry. I'd like to thank John again for joining the podcast, and I hope everybody enjoys this interview. Cinefellas podcast, once again, this is episode 105, and today we are joined by the director, John Swab, of the film Body Brokers. And Body Brokers will be in theaters and on digital and on demand this Friday, February 19th. John, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you bet. Um, So yeah, I got a screener for this film and watched it the other day and I was blown away by what I saw. I had no idea that this was happening within the, uh, you know, the drug world and the treatment facilities. I had no idea that so much money was being made. And that, you know, the story of uh, Utah in the film played by Jack Kilmer was, I'm assuming it's pretty much about your experiences personally. Am I right? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in, uh, in drug treatment centers, um, good ones, bad ones, you know, all kinds. And uh, this story is my story. Um, and it was really great to kind of, uh, and, and cathartic to, to write about it and, and, and play around in this world and tell the story. Yeah, it's really fascinating. It's, it's crazy because, um, you know, it's tied to the, the uh, healthcare, the Affordable Health Care Act, which was passed in 2008, and it, it covers all these uh, substance and abuse treatment programs and all the sober living houses and the intre- inpatient treatment centers that we hear about. And, you know, I, I had even watched some shows based on these kind of places, you know, back couple of years back, they had a few shows that uh, played on like VH1, like Sober Living and that that sort of thing. That sort of focused on the celebrity side, but it kind of gave you an eye into those treatment facilities. And yeah, I just, I had no idea that there was a big insurance scam and that just about how, you know, people that were going in for recovery were actually being recruited to, to get other people that needed help in there and they were just making money off of it. It wasn't for the well-being of the people. It was in this back back end way to make all this money. And uh, like it mentions in the film, it's a it's a multi-billion dollar industry and scam going on. So I'm just wondering, like, with your experience, how did it happen? Did you come across somebody like the same character uh, played by Michael K. Williams would in the film? Did he sort of recruit you in the same way? In a way, I kind of, when I you know, was, uh, was brokered. Um, it was kind of the early days of when people were kind of just figuring out how to do this and how to monetize it. Right. Um, so with me, it was more directly with the Frank Grillo character, the okay. owner of the treatment center. Yeah. Um, 
So since then, there's been kind of this cottage industry that's been created where these Michael K. Williams type characters have popped up all over. Um, so for me, I, I, I dealt more directly with the treatment owner at the time, but since then, now it's, I mean, it's a huge market and, uh, and body brokers, you know, actually make the most money of all these people. Um, so, you know, Michael's character was based off people I knew and off my own experience a little bit as well. That's, that's very interesting. Um, I was wondering within the, the casting of this film, it has some really big stars. Like you mentioned, you have Frank Grillo there. We have Michael K. Williams, Melissa Leo, and, uh, Jessica Roth and, uh, the, the main star, Jack Kilmer. He's that's Val's younger son then. Correct. Okay. How did you, like, how did the casting go with this? Did you, did you, uh, you know, were you involved in the casting of all these characters, like specifically Jack Kilmer's character, since he's kind of, you know, portraying yourself in a way? Yeah, very much so. I mean, uh, I make these movies with, uh, with my partner um, and producer, Jeremy Rosen, and he's uh, a casting whiz. Uh, he has great ideas, um, great relationships with talent and talent reps. And uh, between the both of us, you know, when we have a script, um, we're coming up on our fourth movie together now. We, we sit down, we kind of break down the characters, and we just kind of spit all ideas. And uh, in the case of Body Brokers, you know, it, people really responded well to the material and wanted to be a part of it. So it was kind of my first um, experience with that, where people are ask, actually, you know, pitching themselves for roles. Um, so we, we had a lot of fun. Um, and we, we assembled what we think is a, a near perfect cast, if not perfect. Um, so we were really excited about it. Yeah, I really, yeah, really enjoyed the performances. Everybody did a great job. I loved seeing Michael K. Williams in that role. I mean, we've seen him in the past, um, in that sort of the drug world, of course, with him being in the wire, that's where, you know, he got, he got huge from, of course. And then, I mean, I've, I've always loved all everything he's done and yeah, this, his performance in this film was awesome. I thought he did a great job along with uh, Jack Kilmer. I thought he portrayed a, you know, a young um, addict. Uh, I thought he did a great job. So it, yeah, it's, it's going to be nice following his career from here. I thought he really did a great job as did uh, Alice Englert at, as uh, Opal there, his, uh, you know, his girlfriend in the film. Um, as far as uh, where it takes place in, uh, you, you know, it takes place in Southern California and, you know, it's mentioned, of course, at the top of the film about, you know, Southern California alone, that's, you know, I think it said $12 billion annually from, uh, you know, bodies being brokered in the treatment program. Um, what's the, did you ever look into it like, like across all of the, all of the country, how much money this is resulting in? Because if that's just $12 billion and in Southern California, which is, of course, that's probably the main hub of where all these treatment centers are. But I was just wondering, like, how much, you know, in the USA alone is that? That's got to be, you know, just even more. You know, than... it's, it's tough because I, I, I think I tried to do some um, some napkin math on yeah. what, it, what it was, uh, <laughs> right, you know, right. across the United States. Yeah. Um, and it was like a number that I could, I didn't have room for the zeros on whatever I was writing on. But yeah. it was, it's, it's pretty... And, uh, it's just amazing and disgusting, but I think uh, you know Southern California, um, Southern Florida, and you know now there's you know there's there's treatment kind of scenes and in industry and in a lot of places now Texas. Um, you know these these people are are some really smart that run these businesses. They're not healthcare professionals. They're yeah. businessmen. Uh, you know, and so they kind of you know as something like for instance a few years ago there was a big crackdown in Florida. And so what did all those people do? They moved their operations to California. And, you know, whenever California gets cracked down, they're going to move it somewhere else. I've heard that Texas is a place that these places are starting to pop up now because laws are, you know, they, they, they look at law, they look at state law, and they figure out, okay, we can get away with X, Y, and Z in this place. Um, and they, you know, that's how they, you know, plan on where they're going next. Um, so in terms of your question, I don't know how much money is being made across the whole United States, but mm -hmm. it's a lot, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. a lot of money in it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's mind boggling really. Um, yeah, this, yeah, this is a really timely film. Uh, as far as personally with me, I've had several friends that, you know, have lost their lives to the, you know, to 
specifically the, the last one, I think it was fentanyl going around, just got right. a got a bad batch, and that was it. Uh, you know, he right. growing up, he always had problems. He just could never could never kick it. But he did find success uh, more so in the twelve step program. I'm just wondering from your perspective. Um, do you think that, uh, you know, programs that are already put in place like that are, are better than obviously going to these treatment facilities? Uh, without a doubt in my experience. And, um, you know, I, I've, I have about five and a half years of sobriety right now and, um, it's all due to 12 step programs and the people in them. Um, you know, I, I tried the treatment route and certainly it kind of educated me on my disease a little bit. And I met some good people along the way, but overall, uh, the goal for those places was not for me to stay well. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, it was to kind of keep me in the system yeah. and to, you know, make money off of me. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the beauty of the 12 step program is there's no dues or fees. It's, mm -hmm. you know, one struggling addict helping another and, you yeah. know, been paying it forward so uh that's that's where i found success and where you know i get people calling me all the time asking for help and i tell them to go to an AA meeting or a 12-step meeting you know so right right yeah yeah it's yeah it's just uh yeah it's just fascinating seeing this like it's i haven't hadn't seen it in the news or anything i just had no idea that this you know body brokering was going on and that's Hopefully this movie shines a light on the problem and, uh, you know, we get we get more real honest help and people, you know, seeking treatment that'll work. And yeah, it's just it's sad that, you know, people are basically being sold just for profit. And then, you know, they're after they get out of these places, they're most likely not going to find success staying sober. It's, it's true. Yeah. yeah, it's true. You know, yeah. uh, it's, it's really sad. So I'm hoping that you know, uh, change is coming. Absolutely. Now, um, in the film, we see Utah, uh, the character Utah, you know, he achieves some success, you know, he's able to not use for, I think he gets up to 90 days or more on the film, but he's, he's actually getting some money on the side. Is that, uh, is that something that happened to you too? Like, were they kicking money back to you to sure. like sort of bring oh, in yeah. other people? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was at a treatment center one time, um, and I wanted to leave and go to another place. And the guy said, you know, I'll pay you to come here. And for every other person you bring me, I'll pay you for them as well. So I was essentially, uh, you know, recruiting people to leave one treatment center to go to another. And some stayed because the treatment center we were leaving offered them more money to stay than they were going to get paid if they went with me. <laughs> so... Wow. It's, I mean, it's, it's really, really unbelievable, uh, what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a vicious circle there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then they in turn will take the money and then that once they get out of there, they'll go and spend money foreseeably on to get more drugs and just right. keeps on right. going. Yeah. Right. Wow. It, I really, I really enjoyed the film overall, and I thought that the ending was, uh, you know, it sticks with you too. Because, like I said, I've lost some friends due to the, you know, due to drugs like the ones that we see in the film, and it's sad. And yeah, I hope, uh, I hope a lot of people see this film. Like, I, like we mentioned at the top, it's going to be in theaters and on digital and on demand this Friday, February nineteenth, uh, starting. I wish you all the best on this film. I'm, we're going to tell all our listeners to definitely check out Body Brokers. It's a really great film. Um, I was lucky enough to get a screener, and uh, I'm going to tell everybody to go see this film. And, uh, John, I thank you so much for talking with us today, and uh, uh, all the best to you. Thank you so much, man. You have a great day.